Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mongo, pow, 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 pow. Greetings and salutations broadcasting live from Cape Canaveral, Florida, where I am back after a week at the Biosphere 2 in Oracle, Arizona, as part of the Analog Astronaut Conference 2024. Oh, an amazing, an amazing event. I mean, it has been four, fuel, four full days of me being back home to be able to recharge and get to this place right now. And I am telling you, I was washed out. The desert will do that to you. And not only the desert, but being around 120 of the finest thinkers and creators that this planet has to offer. In fact, Dr. Cyan Proctor herself said to me, Mike, you have to be there. And I was like, why? 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 Like, I'm in training as an astronaut here in Cape Canaveral. Yay! And I mean, analog astronauts is, to me, I thought was more about having colonies on other planets, moons, asteroids in space and things like that. And that's cool. Like, I'm all for it. It's just not the thing that I pursue, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a corollary to what I do. And so I was wrong. Uh, and I'll get to that. Um, I want to show you the t-shirt first of all, because the t-shirt and the design on the t-shirt very much embodies the awesomeness of the Analog Astronaut Conference. I think it should be called the Analog Astrocon. The Astro Analog Astro A Analog Astrocon. Look at this shirt. Look at this beautiful artwork. I am so happy. We get so much swag. I get so much, so much cool swag. And some of it I keep forever, like my uh, my Go Zero G backpack and and uh, my Axiom Space. This was a good one. One second, where is that thing? Oh, I love this. I use this all the time. Swag that I use all the time, I love. Like my friend Nico's got me this. He's at Blue Origin. I was just at Blue Origin this week, and I got to see the new Glenn. This is such a crazy big week. And I just got back from Oracle, Arizona, home of the Biosphere Conference, the Biosphere 2, where the 2024 Analog Astronaut Conference took place. The Biosphere 2 is now run by um, couple, some friends, uh, Kai Stotts, who runs the, the, uh, space, uh, the Space Analog Mars Habitat, which is a brand new thing. And also um, the University of Arizona's Office of Research, Innovation, and Impact. It is a legit full-time science facility. And I don't know that there is a better place in the world to have an analog astronaut conference. So 120 people from around the world flew, made their way to the United States, made their way to Arizona, made their way to the desert, to the Biosphere 2, which has been in operation for over 30 years. And the reason it's called Biosphere 2, by the way, is that this our world is Biosphere 1. I love it. And, and Biosphere 2 is, is one of the most, it is absolutely, without question, one of the modern marvels of the world. Like they used to have the, the ancient wonders of the world. The Biosphere 2 is 100% without question. In fact, it is a national treasure. If you're, if you're into nationalism, if you're into the United States and, and, uh, and supporting and celebrating what makes this place great, the Biosphere 2 is absolutely one of them. You know, we almost had a, um, uh, like a, a CERN here. It was in Texas, but we ran out of funding. These things happen. Sometimes we, we uh, make great and sometimes we fail. And I'm going to get to that, by the way. So, and I was so impacted by the astronaut, by the analog astronaut conference after, after the, a week there in the desert with legitimate real rattlesnakes. Like, it was amazing. And the, the, the Aurora Borealis was there. And 120 of the greatest minds, thinkers, creators, engineers, uh, futurists, artists, musicians, designers, that this world has to offer. And everybody coming together under the auspice of the Analog Astronaut Conference. Again, I asked Cyan, why, why do I need to be there? And now I know. In fact, I woke up from after, like I did some heavy, heavy sleep sessions after that week. I got back here to Cape Canaveral in the comfort of my own bed. We all know how lovely an experience it is to get back into one's own bed, right? And I slept for 12 hours. Like like the first time I just, I, I actually got here from the airport and I just put my stuff down, 
jumped in the ocean, rinsed off all of the adventure, came back, rinsed off, laid down for a nap and woke up nine hours later. And then I went back to sleep and I woke and I slept for another, I slept for another 12 hours. That's a big deal. That's how monumental and experiential the analog astronaut conference is right off the bat. Some people would just like to sit at home and maybe watch, stream, Netflix, maybe draw, maybe read, maybe cook, maybe sew, maybe math, work on math. And that's all legit. Read, read books. We all love that. And then some people like to adventure. And then there's those of us who like all of it, and that's me. So that was a fantastic adventure. When I got back and I, and I slept, one of the days that I woke up, I woke up and I, I was so clear on what Analog Astronaut Conference 2024 meant to me and may mean to you. And that's why I'm sharing this right now. Because if you belong at this conference, I want you to be there. And I'm going to give you some reasons. I came up with this, the AAC 12 points, the 12 points of the AAC. And these are why I think that you should be there if you are dedicated to creating, working with people who are dedicated to creating a world and a future worth having. And that, that I don't care if you are a brand, a corporation, an individual, a scientist, a, an astronaut, a, an artist. It's going to take everybody's hands on deck. All feet on deck, all hands on table. Uh, everybody bringing metal to the battle, so to speak. Put your metal on the table. To defend, support, and nurture this world and, and to create a future worth having. That is the whole point of the Analog Astronaut Conference. These are the 12 points right here. Um, I made a list of some of the people that impacted me, some of the people that impacted me at this conference. And I get to share it with you. I just like, uh, this is the shouts. Here's the shout. Shout! Dr. Cyan Proctor. Yo. It, it, one of the most underrated thinkers and contributors to culture in the world today. She is a person that is a person who... The very, that is a person who understands what it takes to get to where we're going. She understands what it takes. It's not easy. It is simple. Uh, first female commercial astronaut to pilot a spaceship. First black woman to pilot a spaceship. First African-American woman to pilot a spaceship. Legend. And uh, uh, all private astronaut, uh, Jared, Chris, Haley, Cyan with inspiration for yeah she was the one that had me come to this festival she founded she is the original founder of the analog astronaut conference which he founded years ago before she got selected to go to space and since then so many people who have been to this conference have gone on to be astronauts in fact at the conference you can tell who's going to space absolutely it's that conference my people so uh jazz purewall jazz purewall I think I'm pronouncing her last name right. Jazz, as everybody calls her, is the person who is in charge of, like, this is the person that the Cyan trusts to make this conference what it is. And Jazz is, is a, uh, Jazz probably has more influence in our world becoming the world we want than most people I know. She's definitely in the top, I'd say she's in the top maybe 50 because the impact of her actions are immeasurable, probably. This is a really supportive and wonderful human being. And, it's, and the conferences she created, the only conference that I've been to as good as this conference, out of all the conferences I've been in 18 years as an astronaut teacher, is Mae Jemison's 100-year starship. The 100-year starship conference, I think, in 2012, 2013. I remember, and by the way, Alaris Allman, one of the first people I've ever met in the space industry was, was at this conference, and she's a doctor now. There are so many doctors. Space and medicine, my people, that is the relationship. Um, Alaris was there, and Alaris, and uh, the only conference that I've been to as good as the Analog Astronaut Conference in my life, that's ISDC, that's Space Vision, that's uh, Space the this, the one in Colorado that that's all all the different space conferences I go to I love to go to space conferences I love to speak I love to share I love to encourage and I love to meet you and 
conferences enable that to happen. And was the only other one as good as this was the 100 year starship that Mae Jemison put on. I remember going up to Alaris at that conference at, at, in Houston, I think it was 20, 2013, and at the Johnson Space Center. And invite by Mae Jemison, Dr. Jemison, put me on stage. And I thought, I mean, I'll tell that story later. That conference had more women than all the space conferences I'd been up to, been to up to that point combined. Uh, no, that year. You know what? It had more. It had more black women than all the space conferences I've ever been to combined. Even now, eighteen years later, like uh, of uh, thirteen years later, and this conference had that kind of mix. And why does that mix matter? Well, you bear in mind A J E D I: accessibility, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. This is not a catchphrase. This is the only way forward. We do not get to where we're going, my people, without not without having everybody at the table. And I'm talking about including you, a Jedi. Accessibility, justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion. And 100 Year Starship had that, and Analog Astronaut Conference 2024 absolutely had that. Jazz and Cyan are to, are, get to uh, receive the credit for that, for sure. Plus... Uh, Brandy Nunez is somebody who was there and and played a big role in this. She's a she's kind of a rock star in a way. She's very her whole thing is music, and and all the culture and arts that were brought to this event embody the event. Like it it wouldn't if it if it was just engineering, it probably would not be this hyped. But it was culture. It wasn't the industry of space alone. It was culture. It was the culture of space and the industry of space and the future of space. Like I work with Acres Interstellar, and we talk about interstellar space, nonprofit, space, interstellar, space science, research, hypothetical kinds of maths. And that's great and fun and a hobby, and it doesn't have much practicality. However, the applications of the discussions and science and work that was being done at the Analog Astronaut Conference, it impacts us all. And I'll, I'll get into that. Um, I, I, I just keep going, right? Ethan Atwell. Uh, I, if I wrote your name down on here, I, I can't. I remember. I can see what Ethan looks like, and uh, these are these are people that made an impact on me. Mark Wagner is one of the biggest proponents of space education, STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Mark Wagner, I trust him. He's a good one. Mason Robbins, another person I trust. Dr. Mason Robbins worked with me to develop astronaut job camp in his second year at the Saxboard spaceport and now is working in the United States doing fantastic things. I think he might be traveling back to the UK and he was there and he he's in the video. Oh yeah, I got more. Uh, Kai Stotts. Kai I met through Trent Trash, who I met as a crew member of Space Plus 5 with Uplift Aerospace. He was one of the five selected. Uh, me, Trent, Ruben Kincaid, who's about to fly, Joan Melendez Meisner, who will fly in the future, and Sydney Hamilton, who will fly in the future. That's Space Plus Five. And Trent was there. And Trent is, is the director of the University of Arizona Center for Human Astronautic Space Exploration, Chase. And he's great. Kai was there. Kai Ron Sam, the Space Ast Analog Mars, Space Analog Mars, something like that. And it is about uh, a Mars or moon analog, it's primarily Mars, that we can do robotics and trainings. And, and even they have, they have a, a, a pulley system set up so we can experience zero G, the, the weight of our, the gravity of Mars while we're training in their um, enormous Mars habitat uh, at the SAM, the, the uh, Biosphere 2 SAM. S uh, Sarah Calmetta, Sarah the Pivoter. A broadcaster, artist, and uh, ba basically a lightning lightning rod. Some of these people, when we're around them, we know we're in the right place because they're the kind of people that are in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people. And that's that's the opportunity. The reason I'm going over this, by the way, is I'm going to get to that. It's you, um, John Reed, the author, one of the most successful children's space book authors in the world. His books become text de facto textbooks. And, and he writes other stuff now, it's like he's, he's writing novels and doing that stuff. We got to discuss William Gibson and, and Neil Stevenson and uh, uh, Sixen uh, Zhu, the, the author of uh, Three Body Problem, a gr uh, already a good friend. And his son, Isaac Reed, plays big into it, too, because Isaac, age 10, was there. There's kids there, my people. 
that says everything that I need to know. Because without kids in space and STEAM, humanity is not present. Facts. Without students, young students, humanity is not present. We imagine humankind to be just like all adult activity. But one of the reasons I say to kids when I encourage them, students, to, to, to pursue careers in space and astronautics is that I give them permission to live, to work, and to play in space. And sometimes my peers forget that why we do this is because life is good and fun and awesome. And sometimes the stuff that we're doing is so awesome that it is play, even though it's hard work. And I like that. Uh, Sabrina Thompson, the designer, um, Nefertiti Pocahontas on Instagram. And she had, she, they did a space fashion show, these, these amazing jumpsuits that she's very famous for. Um, James Burke, director, executive director of the Mars Society. Matthew Devlin of the Icelandic Space Agency, uh, and Michaela Mus Dr. Michaela Musova. Oh my gosh. This is one of those future astronauts right here. This is a person who's absolutely going to space. This is one of those geniuses. Those one of those one of those people who genius it makes itself accessible to, and then they get to share it with us. Uh, Angela Vermeulen is another one. Dr. Angela Vermeulen. Angelo and Cyan were on the very first crew of the NASA High Seas Analog Astronaut Facility after uh, Cyan and Angelo, I think, but Cyan definitely tried out for the NASA for the NASA uh, astronaut class of 2009. Though she didn't make that, she made it in the top 16, I think. They invited her to be part of High Seas, and she was on the first crew with Angelo. And Angelo's work is about developing uh, livable ha habitats off-world. And he, he showed these work and he, and he explains, he explains in a way that all of us can understand the medical impact of, of us living in space. Not the least of which, um, Shonda Paya was there. Uh, her name's actually coming out right now. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean, Shawa, Shawa Padja. Shawa is amazing. Yo, look at me all hyped still. This is what four nights of sleep will get me. This conference is amazing. It's one of a kind. Well, 100 Year Starship in 2013, but there's a, this is a conference that we can all attend. Well, 120 of us. First come, first serve. Morgan Kainu, Tim Griepentrog, love that name. Brenda Trini, a lot of these people. Terry Trevino, I met through Loretta Whiteside Spacekind. G.O.T. Casey, another future astronaut. Uh, two future astronauts and both doctors, uh, Deepa Raju and uh, Diva Raju. Uh, Alaris Allman, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, uh, Makaya Eustace. Makaya is a future astronaut. In fact, she's working on her master's. She's got, she's, got a, she's got her engineering degree. She's been through the military as a pilot already. I'm telling you, she's priority A level one for real astronaut selection. Like, not, like NASA. That's a person who's going to be, we're going to have all of these new astronaut jobs. And the Analog Astronaut Conference talks about this. this. This is a group of people who understand that, who understand that it isn't the old way that we used to do space. Like if you look at the first people that went to space, it's all exclusively male and white. Holy smokes, we do not get to go where we want to go in the future if that's what space looks like. No one's going to support it. It doesn't look like my family. Uh, Bendu Uman. Bendu was, a, it, she's actually at the Bioneers Conference facility, excuse me, Bioneers 2 facility, and she's spectacular. She's one of those people who's always there, always contributing. And really a part of the of the story and the event. Don uh, Balen, Don Balenzat. Don is cool. What a he's a cool guy. He he played he plays music. There was this guy Ben who played music. I don't, I don't know his last name. He was amazing. Thank you for enduring my name drops. The reason I share all that is because your name can be on that list. And here's why you would want it to be. The twelve points that make up the wonderfulness, the value of the Analog Astronaut Conference are these right here. The first one is community. Community is embodied, like my ethos, my personal ethos that everybody knows, do what I love with who I love and help others. Do what you love with who you love and help others. Do what we love with who we love and help others. Analog Astronaut Conference is that. It is doing what I love with who I love and helping others, period. That's, that's the amazing thing. Curiosity. Remember how I said that, that uh, 
I didn't know why I needed to go to this conference. And Cyan was the one that said, you must go and made me a special guest. I had a curiosity and, and uh, she sorted it for me. Excuse me. I'll probably get a little perp. There it is. Curiosity is what I probably almost all of these people here have in common is that we want to know more. We want to know more about ourselves. We want to know more about our world and we want to know more about our world in relation to the universe. And that curiosity is what is pretty much the thing that unites this community. Creativity. The key to real problem solving. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, right? Well, um, maybe creativity is the midwife thing. Creativity is the thing that turns a, a, an idea into a good idea or a, or a problem into an opportunity. And creativity, every step of the way, the ways that oh, uh, Ren Freeman and, and uh, her, her, her associates, Calvin, who just got his, uh, uh, Alvin, Alvin? just got his PhD at MIT and Nicole, all tribe, all, all First Nation, Indigenous, Native Americans, um, uh, Shinoe, I think, and Ren, well, Ren is, and I think I got the name right. And uh, we discussed, I probably had more conversations with Ren Freeman than anyone the entire time. We'd never stopped talking. And I was honored. And the, the insight that Ren Freeman brought to me, uh, the creativity, the opportunity for, for me to be creative is it was that Ren explained that Native American, the tribe has already an understanding of science that is, that is different than the Western understanding of science. And that is an important idea because there's a lot of experiences that we don't have names for in, in, in Western thinking. It's the best way for me to put it. That's not how Ren put it. That's how I put it. And we discussed this for hours. We had lunch and dinner and, and we talked and, and, and we explained and we shared and we listened. And, and that is part of the creativity of this event. All of these different people coming in contact and up against uh, even oppositional thinking or thinking that had been hard but was softened because of this interaction. That's creativity. We find, like, let's say, if, like, there's the uh, Western way of thinking, and then there's the the First Nation way of thinking in relation to, excuse me, um, upon the topic of of reality. And maybe there aren't there aren't ways. It, maybe it fits like this. Maybe it's perpendicular as opposed to parallel. Maybe it's like this. And so our opportunity is to find segues, the connecting points, or or craft them or invent them. That is a real opportunity. And in doing so, by the way, I believe that what happens is that, is that uh, new metaphors are created. And this is the right time for it because AI is here. And it is, it's legitimately the, the era of miracles where we are now. Um, ingenuity. Yeah. We don't get to go to space without this. Ingenuity is like, is like peak creativity. It's, 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 you know, we think of thinking outside the box. We talk about that. That's an old metaphor. It is the, it's looking at something and coming with a new way of looking at it and then being able to figure out a way sometimes in teams of expressing it so other people can, can take it on and implement it or incorporate it into our thinking and how we live and how we do things. Ingenuity. Now, these wonderful traits right here lead to the tough ones that a lot of us, uh, either turn away from or don't pick up or aren't ready for or are preparing ourselves for. And perseverance is definitely one of them. Perseverance means to push and keep going and keep trying and keep working and keep failing until we succeed. That means no matter what, we, we keep going. Perseverance. And it's similar to persistence. Persistence is keep on coming back. Keep on coming back. Because we all step and we all fall and we all stumble and we all, and we all tumble and we all trip. And thankfully, there's people around us to, to help pick us up. I get to be one of those people. Maybe you're one of those people. There's a, a doctor, uh, excuse me, Dr. Mr. Rogers said, look for the helpers. And 
when we persist, we inevitably will tumble. And anybody who helps us at that time are the people that help us get to this, this fine goal of creating a world in a future worth having. Surprise, there was a rattlesnake. What? There was a rattlesnake. There was a live rattlesnake right there, like, like, in, the, like in the neighborhood, like in the, in the program, in the community. And it was doing its own thing. It didn't even rattle its rattle. It was in its own environment. We were in its environment. That's how very excellent the Biosphere 2 conference, excuse me, Biosphere facility, Biosphere 2 facility is. It is inclusive of the native wildlife as it must be, as we get to be, as a planet, as a community, as a world. There was plenty of surprises. I saw Alaris Allman, who I hadn't seen since 2013. Uh, um, the the opportunities that showed up were all surprises. Getting to meet Ren Freeman and have an open and honest discussion about West and, and First Nation thinking. These are surprises. These, this is uh, the fulfillment of the curiosity of why Dr. Simon Proctor said I had to be there. Sustainability. Listen, this may be the single most important. If you made it this far in the video, I know I talk a long time. We got a long way to go and a short time to get there. We're going to do what they say can't be done, sustainability. Uh, when, I'm when I'm talking with students and scientists and peers and, and wherever, I will often tell, explain this, in, this truth that I understand. And is that we can, by, we, solve for, we can solve any challenge we face on Earth. Energy, health sustainability, the illusion of scarcity by solving for space. We can solve any challenge we face on earth, sustainability, by solving for space. Because in space, it, it's not, sustainability is not an option. Like war is an option. We don't need war, it's an option, we choose it. It's like, there's so many other ways to solve conflict besides war, it's an option. We don't have to choose it. It's an option. It's not an obligation. No circumstance is an obligation. These are the kind of thinking and ideas that take place in events like this. Uh, my friend Story Musgrave pulled me aside at the Space Vision Conference in 2015 at the University of North Carolina. Pulled me aside. This is the person who repaired the Hubble telescope, this commanding a space shuttle up at the International Space Station using the Canada arm. Caught a moving... Hubble telescope and then pulled out a, a thing that was the size of a refrigerator and then snapped it back in and uh, it's legendary. And he pulled me aside to make a point with me that I get to communicate to you and I communicate to as many people as I can, including you. 90% of success is showing up. I wouldn't have had any of this and know this, that the Analog Astronaut Conference may be the, the place where the ideas happen that, that allow us to figure out sustainability, that solves sustainability through the lens of space. And that's real. Because, again, in space, sustainability is not an option. That truth empowers everything that's being constructed there. It's not recycling, reducing, reusing, refusing as options. They are intrinsic to, to any living as they can be, as they should be, instead of just throwing everything away. Adversity in the desert, getting there, just getting there is work. Uh, there, there is time and expenses, that's offsite. Getting there and being there and being present and then facing the challenges that are posed, making sure that everybody's voice is heard. These are adverse, these are real genuine adversities. We all have adversities. We get to come together and discuss them, listen to other people's adversities, take it on, sympathize, empathize, share our own, find a meeting, a middle ground, find a place where we share commonalities, and then solve for them. And that, these adversities often lead to this, creativity. Look, they're right across from each other. Tenacity. Uh, tenacity is sinking our teeth into something. 
and not letting go. Like it doesn't care. It doesn't matter. Like I, I've seen dogs that'll bite on a big branch and you can swing them around and they will not let go. That's tenacious. I have a friend, uh, Holly Shea, and she taught me about tenacity. She defeated cancer. I mean, she went at it tenaciously with a with it. She was irrefutable to cancer. I think she's done it a, a couple of times. And now she's like a full grown up and just crushing it. She's got a beautiful son, Elliot Shea, musician, great thinker, good hearted. And it was because she had the tenacity to defeat cancer when she was younger. Uh, Hey, Holly Arsenault, uh, she's one of the people, she's the first person to go to space with a, with a partial prosthetic. And she's one of the people that had the tenacity as a child to do that, which led to the tenacity that took for her to get to space. There were challenges. She's climbing up a mountain. Remember that? If you saw the Contact uh, miniseries um, on, on, uh, in Netflix, the Inspiration for Netflix, Inspiration for miniseries. Tenacity, failure. Failure is a, is a word that brings a heavy cloud when we're thinking and talking even. Like emotionally, failure. But, but the thing about failure is if I don't fail, I will fail. Failure is learning how not to fail. And that's why people say there's no such thing as failure. Okay, cool. So we can call that experience whatever we want. So, so sometimes some people call failure learning, and, and that's a success in its in, in and of itself. And we got to this part of this, and the way that people at the in, at the Analog Astronaut Conference embrace failure is very interesting. It, it doesn't have that that uh, despair that we attribute to this experience. It is more part, it is, it is like, it's not the destination, it's the journey. In, in, in getting to the destination on the journey, failure will happen or else, or it, it has happened or it will happen. It's, it's not negotiable. It's like I say about surprise. We can never prepare to be surprised, but we can count on it. We may not be able to pre prepare to, be, to fail, but we can count on it. And knowing that and giving a heads up, we will fail. That's great. And having peers share their failure stories, it means sometimes when I hear somebody else's failure story, it often means that I don't have to do that failure because I've learned by listening. What an opportunity. Oh, what? Pow, pow, pow. Nice. That's, that's this. This. It's about opportunity. It's not just about career opportunity. This is a big moment we're living in right now. Everything is changing. And we can either pretend that that's not the case. Everything has changed. AI is here. It got here really chat GPT-4, January 2023. I, I say that the uh, January, the December 2022 is existence and before is existence 1.0. And then January 2023 and on forevermore is existence 2.0, now with AI. A big part of the discussion that we all had here was incorporating AI into existence now. The challenges AI brings and the value and contributions and un unimagined possibilities that are now within reach. Like we can, we can have a world and a future worth creating. That idea alone, <laughs> an idea that I share with people that, that gets people challenged is this. Imagine a world where everything works out for everyone all the time without harm to anyone. Imagine a world where everything works out all the time without harm to anyone. Imagine a world where everything works out all the time for everyone without harm to anyone. Imagine a world where everything works out all the time for everyone without harm to anyone. Would that world have clean water, good food, medical, education, shelter, vocational opportunities, 
opportunities for personal growth. That's the world I imagined. And when I talk about everything working out for everyone all the time without harm to anyone, I'm often challenged with this. That's impossible. Cool. If we don't give consideration to ideas that we think are, are impossible, then we would have never got to space. This device that I'm recording this with, the iPhone, the GPS, of course, space. But did you know the glass is also from innovations that we got from space? Did you know that the solid state circuitry came from microcircuitry, which we got in solving for space? The camera, camera lenses we got, digital camera lenses, the lenses, that's what we got that from the industry and culture of space. Rechargeable batteries, my people, space iPhones, cell phones, all of these coming together. It doesn't happen without space. And now we have AI with all the insight we get from space, combine the two, and we will solve the challenges we face on Earth as long as we're willing to step back away from the stuff that we've already done. Just because we've already done it, this is the way we've always done it. Doesn't mean that that's the way we get to do it anymore. We used to just build stuff, buy it, throw it away, willy-nilly, wantonly. And that's not going to work for us any longer. Not to have a world in a future worth having. Not to create a world in a future worth having where people have clean water, good food, shelter, medical, education, these opportunities. So this is the Analog Astronaut Conference 2022. I appreciate your time and your listening. There are 120 opportunities, seats, possible points of inclusion every year at this conference. And the tickets are open for it right now. You can go to analogastronaut.com, I think, or Google it. And if you want to be part of this conversation, this powerful, mighty, unbelievable, incomprehensible, wonderful conversation, then I invite you to consider attending Analog Astronaut 2025. I can tell you this. I'll be there. And I'll also be at VCon in August in Los Angeles on the main stage. In the words of my people, pow, pow, pow.